Hello there, my beautiful book lovers. My name is Kimia, and welcome to my book knock. So we are in award season and Oscar is coming up. And since I'm such a bookworm and also a dork that is always looking for reasons to read more books and find things to relate them to books and like what can be a good book for this situation, I thought to myself, why not recommend some books that goes very well with this year Best Pictures nominees? And so let's do that, right? So before we start, I will say that I already did a video for Barbie and Oppenheimer by the time that they were coming out. So I'm not going to mention them because I already recommend a whole bunch of books for those two. I will just link it here so you can see for those two. But now that's out of the way and it's going to help with this video to be shorter, we're going to move to the rest of the list. So first we have the holdovers and because we're going to stay spoiler free, we're not going to really get into the movies. It's just a, like a little blurb. And then after that, it's a book. Um, the holdover, it's the story of uh, this group of um, young boys that for different reasons, they have to stay over at their boarding school during the like the winter session, winter break. And the story really focuses mostly on one of them and the relationship that he's forming with his professor, the, like the teacher that's staying also over the winter and another member of the staff and everything related to that. It's sort of a, like a coming of age, um, realizing who you are and um, also sort of trying to see right or wrong in a sense, um, sort of a story. And so for this movie, I will highly recommend The Cider House Rules by John Erwing. Um, so this book, it's about Homer. He is an orphan boy that he was sort of uh, brought up in this orphanage. And um, he is shadowing, in a sense, uh, Dr. Large, who is the person that it's running this orphanage. And so he's taking, off, uh, taking care of these kids. And also because he's a doctor, he's also performing abortions for um, families and women who don't want to have kids, cannot have kids, whatever reason that they have, because as a person that it's running an orphanage, he understands better than anybody else that a kid that does not have a parent, it's much worse than like abortion. And so um, the story is really focusing on Homer and his relationship with Dr. Large and his life in this orphanage. And as he's growing up, his sense of morality, sense, um, his sense of what is expected from him, from the society, what he wants to expect from himself. And so I found it like it's a very sort of a nice match for Holdover. Holdover has that sense of like humor to it a bit more compared to this book, but it's still like um, vibe and style wise, they go very well hand in hand. So I thought it will go very well um, with the Holdover in that sense. Then we have American Fiction, which is actually a movie based on a book, and that is Erosure by Percival Everett. And so the story, it's about this um, black author that has been sort of trying to break through and have his breakthrough and has he's been writing for a while, but he has never been able to really be successful until um, recently a black woman um, wrote this sort of a stereotypical uh, sort of a black story and now she's getting all of these attention. And so he's trying to figure out what type of an author he wants to be. Is he going to write the story that it's stereotypical to like black communities and black men specifically, or he wants to write stories that he likes and he wants. And it's sort of like the conflict between that, that like you want to be successful and actually have your books to sell. And like, you know, people talk about it and everything, but at the same time, um, you don't want to be a sellout. You want to write something that's actually really coming from you and not something that is expected to like, you know, come from you. And so um, while this is a movie that's based on a book, so technically there is a book there, I still felt like I need to recommend another book in a sense. And that is Ordinary Notes by Christina Sharp. So this book, it's actually a whole collection of notes, which in a sense, they're like not exactly essay, not exactly short story, but sort of 
something of the two. And um, these are stories about um, black community. Um, Christina sort of gathered all of these stories from past and the present about um, people that belong to the black community and uh, their struggles, but also a story of love, loss, grief, and that um, sense of worth, um, self-awareness. And so I very loved it because it's sort of like, it's different compared to the like the, the the movie, obviously, but in a sense, it really touched on that sense and the story of this community that has been struggling for so many years because of everything that like you know because of the like the the system that has been sort of built to really create all of these dilemmas. And again, it's not really only focusing on the system and racism, but it's also again like it's a story about a community and everything that they struggle with which happens to every single community in their own ways and so because of that I found it such a perfect match for this movie that it's like the main topic is that that like you know that community their struggles and what is the stereotypical sort of story that comes out of it and what is the actuality what is the difference and so I highly recommend this book because the style is also very interesting because again these are all a bunch of notes so it makes it such an intriguing sort of a storytelling in a sense and so I, I thought it's a great book and I highly recommend it if you like American fiction this was a, like a great book to go with that. Then we have The Zone of Interest which is a interesting movie in a sense. All of these movies they like you know they're going for an Oscar so they're obviously like great in their own sense in most of them most years let's say this year honestly I really enjoyed all of them but like some years there's question there but anyway um so this movie it's about this uh Auschwitz uh, commander that he is living right next to Auschwitz and so you know it's the concentration camp and it's the story of his family living a normal life well right next door all of these other peoples are being tortured and killed and so this story it's really focusing on that sort of um juxtaposition of like these two different lives that are coexisting right next to one another and it brings up all of these questions of like you know lives people like how they can sort of like completely blind be blind to stuff that is happening around them and so it, it, it was a very interesting and like as interesting as a movie with this topic can be and so um for this movie i highly recommend a prophet song by paul lynch so this book it's about um eilish who is a scientist and a mother of four a wife and one day, um, this two officer comes to her door. They belong to the Ireland sort of um, secret service in a sense. And they want to talk with her husband. And so this is a story about this woman and how far she will go to protect her family, to keep the family intact and what are those lines that she will cross and she will not cross and so it's about a, a country that has this sort of a conflict going on because of the change of government and everything that is related to that and so you're seeing all of these people that how they're trying to keep themselves safe but at the same time they need to sacrifice some stuff so anyway i really enjoyed this book because you know when it comes to history most of us study the history of the country that we are in um and it's i at least for me i very much enjoy to read the story and the history of other countries and everything that's happening through fiction and stories and non-fiction and so this one i found it very interesting because again it has the same sort of like it's a different story 
compared to the movie but it's still you have that dilemma that like how far will you go what is the life when there's this conflict is happening around you in the country in the world or whatnot and what are those lines that sometimes you might think you will never cross but you will do and some that you might think that you will but you won't and so like you know it's like everyone's dilemma and so I highly recommend it I very much enjoyed it and they will like they have this sort of same question in the like the midst of it that like what would you do or what would any of us would do and so highly recommend it then we have poor thing which was one of my favorites in a sense i think uh, so poor thing it's actually another movie that it's based on a book and that is poor thing by alastair gray so um this book it's sort of a retelling of frankenstein or if like in a sense um well not exactly a retelling but like inspired by frankenstein and now our main focus is this doctor and bella and bella is this um creation that is this um young woman that has the brain of a child so she's like you know like she's trying to learn things and the story it's about their relationship it's the story about the relationship of this doctor and the, like the the um the society that he belongs to some other scientist and all of these like things that it's happening with it it's a movie that honestly it's weird but in a good way and i love emma stone so like i i enjoyed it very much um, and it was like very entertaining in a sense um, and I highly recommend it I at least enjoyed it um, but I think it's one of those movies that like might not be to the taste of everyone but we will see anyway so because it's sort of a, like a retelling or interpretation of Frankenstein I thought the best book that will goes with it I mean it's Frankenstein of course but another one it's uh, Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadadi and so this book it's about Hadi and he is living in Iraq during US occupation of Iraq and so um, Hadi is sort of creating this um, collection of body parts to show and represent all the people who have died in this war that have been innocent um, civilization that like you know like because of things going wrong accident or on purpose or whatever has been killed during this war like any other war and so he's creating this sort of like uh, like he's putting all of these body parts together to create a, like a human body and then one day this body goes missing and he's not sure what happened to it what is going on and at the same time there are some other murders happening and like he's not sure if it's related or not and so that's the like the main story of it and the reason that i really love other than like the connection that they both have to frankenstein is that with frankenstein and Baghdad, um it's one of those um, stories that it's based on true real life events that brings that elements of like sci-fi fiction to it to touch on such important and very heavy topics and in my opinion at least this book did it so well that I, I enjoyed it it's like it brought up so many questions that you ask yourself about again like all of those innocent lives that are lost during war and everything that happened to the people and how they have to adjust their everyday lives to uh, like a life that it's like occupied by a, like another group and like the lives and their world that it's just being um torn to pieces and so anyway it was a very interesting and entertaining sort of a book i enjoyed it very much and like even like before having the idea of doing this video while i was watching poor things i was like i have to read frankenstein back that again because i read it a whole couple of years ago but um it's like it's the commentary it's really there and I enjoyed it so I highly recommend it that if you like those sort of like retelling and reimpersonation of Frankenstein it's a good one to sort of read then moving on we have past lives which was another favorite of mine for whatever reason it really reminded me of La La Land in, in a very different sense but also very similar ways 
Um, and I, I, I enjoyed it very much. Uh, the past lives, it's about these two young kids that they live in Korea and they're like, they go to the same school and they have this sort of like crush on each other and they're very good friends. And then um, after a while, uh, the girl and her family, they're moving to Canada. And so this friendship, it's sort of like just disappear, you know? And um, so many years later, they sort of come across one another. And the story, it's really about all of those what ifs. And it, was such you know it's one of those movies that nothing is happening while everything is happening you know and so i i enjoyed it very much it was like a very nice one like through this list that i like i i can see myself wanting to watch it again and again and so anyway the book that i will recommend for this movie is Stay True by Hua Husei. I hope that I pronounced it correctly. And so this one is actually a memoir. And so this one, it's about Hua and um, a roommate of his that uh, it's Ken. And Ken is this sort of westernized Japanese kid. Um, because he has been sort of like in uh, US for long enough that he has got all of these like American sort of version of himself like you know with the stuff that he likes the music he listened the movies that he's watching and all of that and who is finding that very like he doesn't like it you know like in a sense that like why are you this but at the same time he realized that um ken it's as much as to hua it's so like american now to american he's not american and because uh ken it's also japanese and so um it's a book that it's about how when you are um, from a different nationality, no matter if you have been like moved here for so many years, if you have been born here or whatever the situation is, you never have that sense of home or where you belong to because you are in this case, for example, too Japanese to be an American and then too American to be a Japanese. And so um, by the, like, the stuff and things that happened to Ken, it's really um, making Hua to realize that like how similar they were, no matter how like the, the tradition that were different, like the stuff that they were practicing in their everyday life was different. At the end of the day, there was that sort of a feeling of loss of where you belong to and where you're coming from. And so I enjoy this book and memoir very much because it's very interesting to me that how this sense of home that this sense of belonging that as a society as the like the world in general but also as like smaller like communities and homes and families we have form but without really giving it a, a definition and it's like very interesting to see that that how like because of how you look sometimes because like you might be born in America but if you have features that make you look like um, like because your parents are from a different nationality or whatever um, you never get to be fully American and then vice versa because where you have been born you never truly belong to that nationality because you've never been born and raised there and so it's like you know it's a very uh, like uh, such a heartbreaking but also heartwarming story to see that struggle and to see that how you at the end of the day should create that sense of belonging and home and it never matters that what some outsider might say might think it really at the end comes from within and so it's it's a beautiful story i very much enjoyed them and more i very much enjoyed the movie and i highly recommend both because you know it's one of those stories that again nothing is really happening while a lot is happening and those are always the best type of the stories so that's that then we have anatomy of fall which it's a very intriguing movie this is a, like a mystery one and so this one it's about this woman that her husband has been sort of killed it's dead uh, he has fallen and so she's trying to prove to the court and also her son 
that she was not the one that did it because the son it's sort of like he was there without being there so he has heard some stuff so he's but like he's a young child so he's not sure the stuff that he heard where they come from like in a sense that like what was the situation and if this is like what happened and again like he's a child that his dad is dead and his mother is being accused of killing his dad so it's like you know and like the, like you're trying to figure out what happened and what is it and, and, and it was a very like I, I enjoyed it very much and so for this movie I will highly recommend The Boy at the Door by Alex Stahl and so um this one it's like again like a mystery and this one it's about Cecilia she is a wonderful wife uh, a wonderful mother she has two daughters and living the life and then one day um, um, she's going to this pool that like her children are like going to and everything and then there is this like little boy that um, her his parents are not there and she's not sure like you know like she doesn't want to leave a child there so she is like you know like let me take you to your home and then everything starts <laughs> and like this child it's sort of like bringing some um, memories back from her past and things that she has sort of like need to deal with and the boy has sort of this like look that like he knows things you know and so this book it's one of those like fast page turner that there might be parts that you might question that could this ever happen in real life but then the story just grabs you in so well that you're like it doesn't matter let's see what will happen <laughs> at least for me that was like the vibe like you know like I was like questioning while I'm going through this story but at the same time I'm enjoying it and I'm there for the ride that like I was like you know let's do it why not and so it's it's a great read you know like mystery is always that like that you cannot give too much away and that's the reason I cannot I honestly am afraid to say anything more because I'm afraid that like anything would be like a clue but um that's the fun part of the like the mysteries that like sometimes they could be questionable but at the end of the day they're fun and it's like you should just give it a chance then we have maestro uh which is a sort of a biopic of this american conductor leonard um, bernstein and so um it's a biopic about an american conductor that's really the story it's about his professional life and his like sort of like public life versus private life and all those struggles and everything about that and so for this one I was like you know like it should be sort of a memoir biography sort of a book to recommend for because like you know that's the best one that will go with it and for that reason I have picked um, Dinner with Lenny by John Cott and so this book, it's the sort of a last interview with Leonard um, right before he dies in a sense. Um, and I enjoyed this because you're reading this book that it's in this interview with this person and he is telling you all the like the truth and like, you know, the gossip and everything, the scoop of his life and everything. Um, as much as like, you know, they tell the truth there are like stuff obviously for like PR they might change you might not be sure but generally speaking it's pretty true and like you know the correct facts and then you watch the movie and you see all of those truths but also you see those like small things that they change for a movie to add drama to it you know like it, for all of the movies that happens to it so I very enjoyed it it was like one of those things that honestly I watched a movie simply because I was like, since I like this one, it was like after that I decided I wanted to do this video, I was like, now I have to watch it. <laughs> and so I watched it for that. And so by the time that like, um, I decided that like, I'm going to do a, like a sort of a biography book, um, I read the book and it was, it was interesting um, because it was a person that I particularly at least didn't really know about or cared about or anything but then by the time that you sort of get into know and read the books the interview and watch the movie it become entertaining and so that's as much as I have to say for this one at least and so let's move to the next one which is Killer of the Flower Moon and this movie it's actually another one that it's based on a book but with the same title by David Gran and so the movie the story the book it's um about this um 
Osaga Nation that they are in 1920s Oklahoma and they found oil in their land and so now they're rich you know obviously and so they're living a very nice life and then after a while every single member of this um, community group start to like die one by one and um, nobody knows what is happening, why it's happening. And anytime that somebody's trying to sort of like investigate to see what is happening, they also end up dead. And the main target and focus has been this woman, Molly. And um, they are really trying to figure out like what is the, like, the story behind this. And then eventually an agent from FBI who is actually like an institution that like recently has been sort of like created FBI. And so they send this agent to sort of try to find out the story um, of all of these killings and then the movie starts and everything goes on. And so um, if you enjoy this movie, I highly recommend to read Empire of the Summer Moon by S.C. Gwain. Um, so this book, it's a um, historical telling of the war between the Comancha um, tribe and the, like the white settler in the West. And it's a, like a 40 year long war that it's happening and everything that's going on. And um, the Comanchas were actually one of the most powerful um, community of Native Americans that they were back in um, like you know at the beginning and they had such a long history they were very powerful and um, the book it's very interesting because it's like two main story uh, one of them is really about this entire uh, group and tribe and uh, like everything that's happening with them, everything like with, by the time that the white settler comes and their like history before them and everything related to that. And also at the same time is the story of Cynthia and her um, mixed child, Quanch, um, who actually end up becoming the last and the most powerful chief of uh, this tribe. And so you learn, I learn so much about the history of this people and everything that they went through and how everything changed. And um, for a, like a, a book recommended for a movie that is about the crime that was happening and like was going on around the Native American groups and how like the power dynamic was changing and everything that was like just related to that, this book was so eye opening. And it was again one of those other books that is so heartwarming but also heart wrenching when you're reading about this many people, you know, that they were living their lives and doing everything on their own, you know, minding their own business. And again, they were very powerful and like, you know, and then eventually how everything changes. And so it, it's a great book. And I, I, again, like this one is a, like a historical telling. So it's not really fiction. And that actually, at least to me, adds so much more. And it, it makes, even though it's like a different sort of a tribe and a story and like, you know, um, it's not totally related made me to appreciate the movie more in a sense um or at least that's how i sort of perceived it so i think it would be like a sort of a good match for one another um but anyway that was the list i hope you enjoyed it and i hope that we're all gonna see the people that the nominees that we want to win win because you never know and don't forget to hit subscribe and like and let me know what are some of your suggestions of like books that will remind you of these movies. Until the next video, happy reading.